So now that I've got my Azure Virtual Desktop environment set up, I have already set up a uh, host pool. Inside that host pool, you'll see uh, that there are a number of uh, session hosts. So there are two virtual machines in there. Uh, and I have also created my application groups, but importantly, you'll note that the application group type that exists at the moment is a desktop application group, which means that it permits the user to log into a full virtual machine desktop uh, and use it like a normal device. So what we're going to do here shortly is we're going to create a new capability that will only display the single application here. We've also got our workspace. Our workspace is where those capabilities are uh, displayed or pushed out for the user. So if we go and have a look at our workspace here, so here's our workspace. The only thing that we have in here is this uh, session, this desktop session. So if I go in and connect to this uh, with my credentials, it's going to allow me a full desktop experience. So I'm going to be able to go in there and run the browser, run the applications that I've got installed there. So it's just like you know, a normal uh, desktop session here, right? So again, I could go in here and uh, run, for example, uh, PowerShell or whatever. So what I'm going to do here is uh, we'll close that out. So let's just end that session there. And you'll see here what I want to do is add the capability, but instead of the whole desktop, I just want to add simply one application that the user uh, can run. Now to do that, I'm going to go to application groups. I'm going to create a new group here. Now you'll see that I have to um, put in the subscription and select a resource group, which uh, I've set to be the same as the existing environment. I've also nominated a pool of machines on which I want this to run. Now you'll notice that when I do that, if the pool already contains a desktop application group, I'm not given the option to create another desktop uh, application group in that. So remember, for your pools, uh, you'll only be able to create one desktop application group. From that point, if you already have that in the pool, you'll only be able to create uh, remote app uh, application groups. So in this case, I only want to create a remote app group. So I'm going to give it a name. And now I need to select which applications I want this uh, to use. So I'm going to select the option here uh, from the start menu, but I can select the file path and also a mixy package, but I'll leave it as the start menu. I'll pull down the option here, right? You'll see, scroll through all these. And let's just pick WordPad to keep it simple. No other command line options, so I'll save that. And then I'll go on to the assignments. Now, which users do I want to be able to have access to just this uh, application? So I'll select uh, my two standard users. All right, and then I go to a workspace. Now here, I can register with uh, the workspace. So it will display uh, for the users. So I'm gonna select yes here. And you'll see it's already determined there is a workspace associated uh, here. Let me uh, take that. No advanced, no tags. And let me just review and uh, create here. Now, when I create here, this will only take uh, a few moments. And what it's going to do is it's now going to basically publish an additional icon, just the application icon I've nominated. In this case, it will be WordPad. We should see that appear in the user's workspace uh, once we uh, refresh it, once the application has deployed. And what will happen is when we select that uh, application icon, in effect, it will run a virtual machine or give us a virtual machine session from the pool, but it will maximize the application we've selected from uh, the machine, the virtual machine in the pool and only allow us to work uh, with that application for you know, that session. So we've seen this now complete here. So, all right, let's go back to our Azure Virtual Desktops. All right, so let's go into our application groups. And we see here, here is the new uh, remote app we've just added. But you'll notice that across here on the application type, you'll see it is, is, its type is remote app, not desktop. Okay, so let's go back to our client here and refresh our workspace and see what is displayed. Now what we should see here uh, when it does refresh is the WordPad. This is the application that we have uh, just published to the workspace for our users. So if I select this, you'll see that I'll need to uh, log into this application as you would a virtual machine. So we need to go through that normal 
identity login. And what it's going to do is it's effectively, like I said, going to run that application on a session from our pool, but it's only going to allow us to access, you know, that session. So you'll see here, there's nothing else I can do. I can't, you know, I can't minimize it. Or if I can minimize it, it just disappears. You'll see that I've got no other option, no desktop uh, there that I can access. All right. So you'll see that again, if I you know, maximize it, all right, it comes up to the full screen. But if I minimize it, you'll see there's no desktop here. Um, I can't interact with anything. I can't hit the start menu to generate anything. So I'm just running this application. Okay. All right, now with that, I can also go over here and for example, launch another desktop session. So I've pushed this into the workspace uh, for the user. So now uh, the user can also access a desktop session and do uh, any additional work they want to uh, in that environment. But like I said, the application I've just created here, that's effectively all I've got access to. Now, if I close that um, published or remote app out, what it's going to do is effectively end, uh, end that session. All right, so it's gonna end that workspace session. And again, um, if I want to access that, then I would have to click on that icon uh, as well. So I'll take a moment to exit out. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is close out the desktop session. Uh, we'll wait for the workspace to end. Uh, and like I said, we now have an application as well as a desktop uh, session in there. So let me say that I want to add yet another application. So what I'm gonna do is go back here once again to the application group. I'm gonna create a new uh, application group again for another application I wanna publish. Again, go to AVD, select the existing pool. You'll see I've only got the option for remote app again. So let's give this the name of remote app uh, one. All right, go next. Uh, and then I'll add an application here from the start menu. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I will uh, go through the list here and uh, look for, uh, where we go, Windows PowerShell ISE. All right, so we're going to save that and go to assignment. So I'll assign this uh, to my standard users as I uh, did before. All right, so I'll add my two users and give them access to this and select that and go workspace. Now what I'll do is I won't register it with the workspace, just show how to do that manually. Skip that step, no advanced, uh, no tags, and review and set up. So what I'm gonna to have to do now is once I have created this application group, I'm going to need to manually go in and assign it to my uh, workspace. And again, no different from if you were doing a desktop application group or another uh, remote application group. So we'll just let that um, complete its process of initialization. And then, like I said, we're taking that extra step now to go into the uh, workspace or the work workspace, and then we're going to go in and add that um, application in there manually. Uh, we don't have to do that. Obviously, we can do that in the setup of the actual application, uh, but this is the way that you can do that. If you want to, for example, target it to a you know a different workspace all right so now it's done so let us go back into our desktop let's go to our workspaces uh, you'll see here's our existing workspace select that and what i'm going to do is select the option for application work groups you'll see the two that i've already created so let's add this third one in here you'll see it appears up the top here I'm just going to add that in go select and that will then update that uh, workspace uh, environment Right, so that now is included. Now the idea here obviously is you can have multiple workspaces uh, targeted for users. So we go over to our workspace here that the user would see. Let us refresh uh, the page here. And what we should see is we should now see an additional icon which is our PowerShell icon along with the other two that were there. So there's our PowerShell. So let's go in and run uh, that PowerShell app. So we go in here again, we'll have to Log in, and we could then go in and run, you know, our Word uh, Pad app as well. So let's go in and run that. So again, that's another uh, application there. So you see how quickly it loads the second time. The first time it takes, you know, a little bit longer uh, to go and uh, basically, you know, spin up, uh, but uh, it gives us that you know capability to 
uh, do that quite quickly once it has uh, basically uh, spun up. Okay, so we have our uh, WordPad here. We can go in here and you know, type our document. We can go to our uh, PowerShell environment once we've maximized it, right? So you see it here. Uh, we could go in here, say, and view any uh, scripting pane and so on. So that's uh, ready and good to go. But you'll see that again if I minimize that, um, you know, or, and minimize this, you'll see that I don't get any access to any of the desktop. And if I click it again, it will maximize it for me. And of course, what we can also do then is go in and run our, our desktop uh, session as well. So we can have all three running. So the idea with a uh, remote app is that instead of publishing the whole desktop, we can actually just do our application publishing, which is really handy if you just want to restrict users access to a particular application. In this case, we've published uh, the desktop, just Word, uh, and also uh, PowerShell as well. And we can flick between those uh, at any point in time. Now, the way that we did that, we or had already established our Azure Virtual Desktop environment with a pool, right? So this is a pool of our uh, virtual machines in there, and that obviously you can adjust to uh, handle the capability and the multiple sessions that you uh, want to take advantage of. And this is one of the great things about Azure Virtual Desktop. We can create that uh, flexibility uh, as required to achieve that. Once I've got the pool, then I would go in and create my application groups Remember, you can only uh, get a single desktop application group per pool. All of the rest will then be remote applications, which is effectively publishing one app uh, out for, to the environment. We add that to our workspaces, and then the user should basically be able to see the icons for the applications, the remote apps that we've published, plus any session desktop, and then be able to jump into uh, any of those and work with them. Now, the major difference between, like I said, is the desktop session is the full desktop will be able to go in and run any applications on uh, that host, whereas application publishing is effectively, you know, just going to be limited to um, that single uh, application. So it makes it really handy, like I said, to lock an environment down uh, to restrict access to just that uh, one application. All right, but remember to achieve that, we firstly have needed to go in and create our Azure uh, virtual desktop environment, and then we can go in and build and add on uh, the application groups uh, as we want. Thank you very much for watching the video.